from last week in your hand, too. Um, the, the, not that you have to do it, the fracturing, the radiating lines, or whatever, but even if you do not do it, do um, keep that idea of edges and where things meet, and this particular setup with the citrus in the, uh, and apples, too, and in the, um, uh, is capitalizing a little, again, on these broken, fractured things, which the paper does. As you see, you know, it bends, it, it folds. These are, again, some radiating uh, motifs that, that follow out the, um, in, in these setups. So keep that in mind. And again, I, I emphasize that doesn't mean you have to do this arbitrary thing that we did before. Um, and I came across a uh, painting from the 30s. Uh, some, Jan Gilmore is not here, but she probably has heard of this woman I had not. Helen Clark Oldfield, a California artist. And it was a, very, a perfect example of kind of what we had done, <coughs> the idea of using this fracturing um, uh, rectangular shapes, things that go through and shift, um, and so I was intrigued. Is, is how do you enter or appreciate a setup? And some of these are here. And I listed a number of things: the commonality of objects, obviously citrus or the apples, or, or sometimes the differences, um, color. That's evident in these. Um, the abstract factors of shape, the orientation, and you know how it's looking at it can often be very much how you get into it in order to paint it, or if you were critiquing a painting on the wall, you know, how how do you enter, literally enter? Um, and sometimes an emotional connection or memory, and you can believe it or not, people have emotional reactions to citrus fruit. Um, I mean, it often evokes something, including weather, winter, vitamin C, you know, all sorts of things. Um, again, I'm just trying to get people um, to, to be aware of your reaction and then your interpretation. Um, this, uh, this one, instead of being a, um, a somewhat uh, overhead view, is very, is either eye level or possibly above eye level, which is interesting. Um, this one looks absolutely wonderful. You know, you don't even have to be near to things sometimes. You know, certainly to get the compositional, sometimes to get the compositional um, play even better when you were at distant from it. Brushes are very important. And I, it's, it's striking, and I include myself, I, I used a Robert Simmons 12 round um, the so-called white saber uh, synthetic um, for years, and I, it was practically the only brush I ever used. And um, uh, and I became sort of pathetically devoted to it. Um, I never use it now. In fact, I bought a new one because I worn it out, and I bought a new one which was different, actually, as many of you may have noticed. And so this is what I want to point out: is awareness of your brushes. Um, I'm highlighting a few, and I actually went over to Plaza in D.C. Um, to take a look at some of this. Um, some of them being um, the, the, this is the Windsor and Newton, um, uh, what do we call it? Um, uh, series seven. One, series seven. Oh, this is the round here. Um, yeah, and this one is the um, wonderful one stroke, Windsor and Newton. Very fluffy, very, very nice, which is this one. Um, very different from, though these both are flats. Um, this, um, this is a Windsor Newton also with a loose side handle, one inch flat. This is a much more aggressive brush. It's one of the brushes with its little sister um, that is excellent for um, pulling out or for doing uh, even linear work because it has a flat when it's uh, wet and I don't don't need water, um, as is this one. And it is very, very different from this, which is a soft, very expensive 
Um, comparatively, uh, this is probably 40, 48, something like that. This is, do you remember, 12, 13 dollars? Like yeah, at, and at this, this, this is at the school. Um, and I, these to me are brushes of great work, and, um, but what I'm trying to emphasize when you're looking at brushes or you have, some people have a whole collection, beautiful, expensive, and or cheap. Yes, it's sort of the same, it is not in its behavior. This conveys a ton of water. It's, it's sort of luscious. I mean, they're words that you would use with it. Um, and uh, this is another version, uh, which is uh, Princeton. Um, again, luscious, sably, feels good, and conveys a lot of water and a lovely soft touch. Again, rounds. Here we have uh, number 12, uh, Camlon. Oh, excuse me, that's a cool one. Uh, this is the, oh, this is the Yasutomo round, which I have not been able to find. I had been able to find it at I think Plaza, but so I don't know if it's still. This is um, the 12-inch uh, round Windsor and Newton uh, saber. They're very, very, very different in their behavior. Um, both, I, I, both are good. This again, like it's kind of flat brother, cousin, sister, um, is, is quite luscious in its feel and, and makes me paint a little differently. I mean, I find that I'm really uh, pulling it around and, in a, in a, or letting it lead me is probably more um, and, and it, it's very predictable in how much water, that's the other thing about brushes, you become able to predict because of your using them, um, how, how it works. So that you will instinctively reach for something uh, as you're painting, and, no, I need a small, a half inch flat because I'm gonna do such and such. Or I, I need and want this because it's gonna do that kind of gesture. So I, have these examples um, for you to think about. There's also uh, here I have two filberts, which um, I only recently have started using, um, and I'm really liking them. Um, this is the Cam One. This is the Robert Simmons, and I think they're probably both half inch. Well, this is half inch. They call this twelve. Um, the other thing is. If you look at your own brushes, and they, you probably have a hundred different, everyone has different brands, some are, you know, only wins or new, and some are all over it, is the, uh, the ratio of the bristles and where, you know, and when um, the ferrule gets it is essential to the bounce and the control. So those are the things. I mean, you might say, you look at somebody else's brush and say, you know, that just seems so different from my uh, round or my, it, this is particularly seen in the flats. So, uh, you know, that ratio is essential. There are many, many brands of one inch flat, um, which can be a very useful brush in many ways, including calligraphic. Um, but if, if it's shorter or longer, it's going to behave differently and it's gonna convey water AKA washes different. So those, those are all the things to, to play with. And on my handout, I think I also pointed out that there's so much, many psychological little factors that go into this. The paper you use, the water you use, whether you use tea or water, um, the, the paints, um, uh, the paper I said. So when you, very often, when you, when you have worked with something and you feel uh, good about what it's done, and you've got just the right amount, and it went from your palette, um, or from your water jar to your palette to your paper, and it just felt right. Sometimes that will be determining, and you'll say, this is the brush for me, or the paper for me.